and welcome to Crosstalk, where all things are considered. I'm Peter Lavelle. Again, Athens finds itself at loggerheads with its creditors, particularly the IMF. The Greeks appear to be willing to do only enough to stay in the Eurozone, while the rest of Europe is willing to offer it just enough support to stay afloat. All the while, making the Greek economy almost impossible to grow. Is the Euro a failure? To crosstalk the Greek economy, I'm joined by my guest, Sherizad Raymond in Washington. She is a professor of international finance and director of the European Union Research Center at the George Washington University. In New York, we have Mitch Feierstein. He is a fund manager and author of the book, Planet Ponzi. And in London, we cross to Stephen Hazler. He is the director of the Global Policy Institute. All right, crosstalk rules. In fact, that means you can jump in anytime you want, and I very much encourage it. Okay, I'd like to go to Serizad in Washington. Uh, a couple of issues here. We have 1.6 billion euros owed to the European Central Bank. We have to have a deal between uh, the Greeks, the IMF, uh, the Germans, and other European capitals. And this all has to be done by Tuesday. How is this all going to end? Uh, you know, it's looking less and less likely this is going to be done in time. Uh, if, if they don't uh, come to an agreement, uh, the main issue really is the $7.2 billion that's supposed to be released later on this summer will not be forthcoming. So they are in a bind at this point. Okay, Mitch, you know, but, you know, in the introduction of this program, I said, you know, you know the, the Greeks are only going to do just enough to stay in the Eurozone, and the European Union itself is only going to do just enough to keep it in the Eurozone. That seems like a halfway job to me. I mean, I don't see how it's going to work for anyone, ultimately. It's going to end in a, in a, in a pool of tears. The euro is a failed project because there's no central treasury to begin with and no ability to enforce any of the regulations. Now, Greece is getting a bailout. It needs at least 50 billion more on top of the bailout that it might get this time if they kick the can down the road and play extend, pretend, pray, and delay, which is a game. The debt needs to be written down by 50 to 75 percent to be meaningful. What's going on here is it looks like democracy is being usurped. The ECB, the IMF, and the EU don't like what Syriza stands for. What the, the plan looks like is they're going to kick the government out and replace it like they did in Italy. We've seen this going on throughout democracy with Yugoslavia, Kosovo, Ukraine, Egypt, Libya. It hasn't worked well. So what I think is happening is they're trying to prevent an accident with what I call the figs, which is France. They're a bigger problem. Italy, Greece, and Spain because they're all next. So someone will leave the euro. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Well, okay, you bring up the, the issue. Because numbers don't work. You, numbers you, never, no. You bring up a good issue, and I think it's, you know, and I can solve some, sum it up here, it's contagion. Contagion. Stephen, if I go to you in London, is this what this is really about? Because logically speaking, you should write down Greece's debt. It's never going to be able to pay this at the rate of growth that it has. It's flat, okay? But the worry is, is if you give one a dispensation, then everybody else will take advantage of it. Is this what this really is about? Yes, it is, really. I think what they're worried about in Brussels and the German leadership is the fact that if they do give what they think is a soft ride to Greece, then, of course, Italy and Spain follow. The only problem with that argument, and it's a serious problem, is that it might be a good thing yeah. if they wrote down the debt. And it might be a good thing, too, if they write down parts of the debt of Italy and Spain as well. We have far too much debt in the world. Uh, we, the austerity policies which are being forced on the government of Greece and all over southern Europe, and indeed on Britain, are not helping our economic situation at all. They're increasing the debt. So I think at some point we're going to have to get to write-downs or haircuts or whatever you want to call it of this debt. And by the way, if we do have to do that, uh, I don't think it will affect the euro as such. The euro is a totally different operation. It's about the political unity of Europe, which is a far deeper and more important reason for keeping Greeks, Greek in the, in the club, Greece in the club. Well, Sarah, what if we, Greece doesn't want to stay Can in the club? I in? mean, yeah, go ahead. Please do. Yes, I, th I think number one, you know, uh, you have to understand that this current negotiations going on is really about the IMF first. Yeah. They're the ones who are saying no to the plan because yeah. the plan is full of uh, tax increases, which is going to slow down growth and not enough spending cuts. 
the other monies due, yes, are to the EU and the ECB. You know, and previously one of your speakers just mentioned that the Eurozone war has structural defaults. And yes, it does, but some of them have been really shored up. The ECB now effectively is a lender of last resort to the European banking system. So they have shored up a lot of the things that created some damage earlier on. Yeah, but Mitch, you know, it's really interesting. If you look at Peter, the... I'd like to jump in for a yeah, second Yeah, go ahead, because, like it, because it seems to me that it, you go from one crisis to another crisis, and this is the way it's the back door. No one voted to have the European Central Bank doing what it's doing, but it's doing what it's doing because of default. Yeah. Go, go ahead, Mitch. Go ahead. Jump in. But what, what is it backed by? It's backed by nothing. You've got an OMT. You've got wild, reckless money printing backed by nothing. That's going to end in tears. What did we learn from 2008? We learned how the printing presses operate to get more ink and get more paper and print like wild. We've created bubbles in every single market everywhere. Everything. The bond market in every country is ridiculously priced. You can't value stocks. Stocks are trading at all-time highs not on valuation, but on money printing. The money's got to slosh somewhere. In the last seven years, there's been more debt accrued by all the governments of the world than in, in the history of time. And this is with yeah. a zero interest rate band. So it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out once interest rates go up, these governments can't even pay the, the interest, interest on their debt, which makes them all insolvent. Okay, Stephen in London, jump in. You want to jump so, in, go ahead. You know, it's a, it's yeah, a but this is, nothing, this is nothing to do uh, only with the euro. The United States Federal Reserve has been printing money much more than the European Central Bank, uh, printing it through their QE operations for some years now. Massive debts in the workable, what everyone thinks is a workable federal system in the United States. So uh, he here's, the, here's the issue. I think the European leadership have got this wrong. Basically, introducing austerity and sticking yep. with austerity policies uh, 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 in countries like Greece and Italy and Spain uh, is, lead is only leading to more debt and more trouble. Yep. That's why the fundamental thing that unlocks all this, the key that unlocks the problem, is not to abandon the euro, it is to abandon the policy of austerity, which for reasons I can't understand is being forced on Greece. And just one more quick point, one more quick point. Why on earth is the IMF interfering in Greece and saying, uh, we don't mind your overall numbers here, but we want you to do uh, less on taxes and more uh, on cutting expenditure? Uh, that, that's nothing to do with them. If the Greeks want to solve their problem and get a bu budget surplus uh, by, uh, by, cutting ta by increasing taxes on the rich, they should be able to do it. The IMF shouldn't interfere on those kind of issues, Peter. just showing it's a rich man's club. Okay. Who wanted to jump in there? Who wanted to jump Peter, in? Peter, can I jump but in Please here. do, please do. Yeah, Peter. Peter yeah, I'll jump in. Look, let, me go, let me go to, the IMF let me go to Washington. Has... Go ahead. Peter, the IMF has all the rights here to jump in. They've given money to this government and loans. And the bottom line is this is a country that is notorious for failing to collect taxes. And 90% of their plan right now is based on increasing taxes. But, you know, there are some salient points here. All of this started as market failure because for almost eight years, the markets were lending to Greece at low interest rates, right. the same rates as Germany. And that was just market failure. And then on top of that, the European leadership and the ECB in 2010 failed to take action in crisis management. Now, in the crisis management, and I'll do this really quickly, when you have this kind of crisis, there's a liquidity issue. And you've got to pump liquidity in the market right away to stop the contagion. They didn't do that. Mm -hmm. And then it spread to the rest of Southern Europe. Okay. Mitch, you want to jump in there? Go ahead. Yeah, liquidity, liquidity, yeah, liquidity is no solution for insolvency, and people need to learn that. The other, the other guests mentioned that the U.S. has debt. I, I explain this in 406 pages, so it's difficult to do it in a couple minutes. Yes, their debt is about 227 <laughs> trillion with a T, trillion dollars. But you know, and if you look at the aggregate debt that the Bank of Japan has, let's add them into the fray. They are insolvent as well. So how can this end? What happens down the road? There are going to be sovereign defaults. Anybody who thinks there aren't going to be sovereign defaults is kidding themselves. Should Italy be paying 1% in, in their 10-year bond? Absolutely not. This is madness, and it's all precipitated by the money printing by the Fed, by the Bank of Japan, by the ECB, and the Bank of England. They're all complicit, but nobody ever, and especially in the mainstream media, will point this out because they've got to continue with the narrative. 
And most of the people who are trading in the markets are in their 20s or 30s, so they don't remember in 1981 yep. when the 10-year bond in America was trading at 1581, and we've gone straight down since then. And we're going to continue to spiral right down, and this will not end well. And we can also add in quickly that Greece doesn't belong in the euro to begin with, and I think we need to discuss that because Goldman Sachs falsified its financials to get them in to That's begin right. with, but nobody wants to even broach that topic. Okay, Stephen, you want to go in, uh, jump in there because yeah, it's a well-known story that uh, just about everybody involved in the Euro project in bringing in new members lied a lot. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, everyone lied, really. Um, but the point is with Greece, of course it shouldn't have come in in the first place. It's there now. Yep. Let's grow up. It's a small country. This has to be solved politically, not by accountants. It has to be solved by politicians who have a vision of the continent. The problem is if you kick Greece out, this will be the first time anyone has left the euro and will be such a psychological damage to the movement for European unity. So I think that the euro has always been a political project, by the way. It's not been an economic project dreamt up by accountants. It was dreamt up by the, by the, by, by the Germans and the French initially, uh, and uh, it'll remain a political project, which is why, in my view, I think it's very unlikely uh, these, with these ongoing, ongoing negotiations, the ultimate end is going to be Greece being kicked out. Okay, when well, the European Union is always like to talk about Peter, itself. I'll jump in let, here. let me go to a short break here, okay, and I'll go back to you in after that break. And we'll continue our discussion on Greece. Stay with RT. Welcome back to Crosstalk, where all things are considered. I'm Peter Lavelle. To remind you, we're discussing Greece's economic woes and possible ways out. Okay, Senator, I'd like to go back to you in Washington. Um, I think it's, a, you know, I can use the example that if you owe the bank $20,000 and you can't pay it, you're in trouble. But if you owe the bank $200 billion, it's the bank that's in the trouble. Do you think that's part of the, the Greeks you know, negotiating strategy? Yeah, they're trying to, you know, but they're failing miserably. The bottom line is this is an, uh, uh, a very young, uh, untested government on yeah. the political arena. They don't know how to negotiate. They actually thought they had bargaining power then and walked in here. The bottom line is this is a fringe government. Uh, and all across Europe, what you're seeing is because the austerity measures were yeah, put in it's place it's prematurely, where there should have been crisis management, you've got fringe governments popping up everywhere. And now we're worried about some of the larger countries like France, which was just mentioned just earlier, where Marie Le Pen has gained 25% of the vote, and they're worried about the 2017 elections, where not that she will become president of France, but she will have some influence there in terms of a coalition, and the centrists are being pushed out in Europe, and it served them well in the past. You know, you know, Peter, can I jump in for a second? Go, go right ahead, because I, one of the things I think is really interesting here is that we heard from Stephen that the EU has always been a political project, but most people in the EU are not asked about that. They're asked about very different things. Go ahead, Mitch. Yeah, but who voted for anybody in the IMF, the EU, or the ECB? How about a big fat zero? Now, to say that it's a fringe government, they were democratically elected. Does that concept mean anything anymore to anyone? So they have a mandate from the majority of the people. They do not, you know, Syriza has the mandate of the people. That should be meaningful. It shouldn't mean, well, we want to do over. We don't like what they came up with. We don't like that mandate. We're going to do it over or we're going to replace them like what happened in Italy. You know, we can name five governments where that happened. Now, a big part that you left out about what the difference between the IMF's plan and what Greece wants is they want to cut the pensioners um, pension, pensions down, pension pots will be taken away. That's going to happen all over the world. But what did the pensioners in Greece and what did the 18 to 25s or 30 year olds have to do with the bad loans that the banks made that they have to have it I agree with like 50% to 70% youth unemployment and or the pensioners who, who are the vulnerable uh, people in society have their money stolen out of their pocketbook. 
to for these backdoor bank bailouts. They shouldn't. Okay, okay, but Stephen. Okay, but Stephen, let's be fair here. Uh, all the banks in Northern Europe that loaned uh, Greece these money, all these monies here, they expect to be paid back too. I mean, I mean, two wrongs don't make a right here. Go ahead, Stephen, because you know there are people that have loaned this money out under terms and conditions that maybe none of us feel comfortable about, or maybe it's not even uh, 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 directed towards growing an economy, but making certain individuals rich. But nonetheless, their money has been loaned. Go ahead. Yes, money has been loaned. It's been loaned badly. We've had a whole generation of bankers who have lent very unwisely over many years. Uh, bankers, by the way, not the people necessarily who put the money in the banks, the bankers themselves. Uh, some of these big banks in Wall Street and so on, like Goldman Sachs, have been up to their eyes in all this. Now, they're the people who lent these irresponsible loans, just as they lent irresponsible loans in the housing market in the United States yeah. in the early part of this century. They've lent irresponsible loans to European governments as well. So this is a two-way street. Street. The problem is the poor governments needed the money because of the collapse in Wall Street leading to a recession, meaning they had much greater pressure on their welfare states. I don't blame the governments of Greece, Italy or Spain for this at all. And I, don't, I, I blame for this the people who caused the financial crisis and above all the ludicrous global financial system we have in the Western world now, which can only solve problems by adding to the debt. Look at what the IMF and the European Union and so on are saying to Greece. They're saying, you can get out of your problems, Greece, by taking more debt on yeah. and, by adopting, and by adopting austerity policies that won't lead you to have any growth so you can pay the debt off. It's an absolutely no-brainer that they've got to get out of this somehow. It's, it's an absolutely well, silly policy. Sarah, if I go back to you and watch it, there is a way yeah, out of it. Go ahead, please do. Yeah, and the bottom line is, you know, he, uh, you know, your speaker is right. You know, the, this was market failure, which I mentioned earlier, that loans were given to a government that shouldn't have been given to at that low rates. But the bottom line is the Greek government has not behaved responsibly either. I mean, their tax collection policy, we know corruption is not under control. There's a lot of other issues in the Greek economy that has to be shored up, which hasn't been done. And then having a fringe government negotiate on a silver bullet, which it promises people, is also not responsible governance at this point. Now, I'm not advocating anyone remove anyone, but oh. the chances are there'll be snap elections in the next six months because this government's done. Okay, Mitch, you want to re reply? Go ahead. Peter, Peter, can, yeah, I want to jump in here. It's not a fringe, a fringe government. They were democratically elected. A snap election means the Troika has used the mainstream media to unseat them like they did in Italy. I wrote an excellent article, if I must say, in the Huffington <laughs> Post called Capitalism Without Bankruptcy <laughs> is Like Catholicism <laughs> Without Hell. Okay? Capitalism, bankruptcy are two concepts that we've lost track of. Those banks should have been let go and unwound like the Resolution Trust did with all the SNLs in America. Quite frankly, giving them more money has just created a bigger problem. And as far as deleveraging happening in Europe, it hasn't happened. The two big defaults are bigger. None of the banks have delevered. We learn nothing. The derivatives books are up to over $900 trillion that the banks have. You know, do you think it's a coincidence that when the Greek tragedy this round the final 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 um warning came out that the two co-ceos of deutsche bank were out the door and you also saw a two thousand percent move in the german ten-year bond from 0.05 percent up to one percent i don't think that's a coincidence and also all these politicians realize that if interest rates go up it's game over for the derivative products that are out there in the market all of these banks yes. will implode and that will be the end so they've got to maintain the semblance and france so, will probably so, be the first one to leave okay, the euro okay stephen you know one of, okay there is a solution there is a yeah, hang on let me just get a point here there is a solution to this and it's called the banking union but you know after all of the pain and all the money that's been loaned and and wasted and will never be repaid i don't see anyone in europe particularly the northern in, in northern europe will want to get behind a banking union to make this more sound because too much private money is involved in this as well that's why there's so much pressure to pay it back it's not paying it back to states it's paying back to individual investors here St uh, okay sherry do you want to jump in go right ahead 
Yeah, you know, you can't have it both ways. You know, we, we, you know, on the one hand, I'm hearing, you know, let the banks fail. And on the other hand, I'm hearing people are in too much pain. Well, the bottom line is, if the banks fail, it's going to be the lower and middle class that are going yeah. to get hit first. And, and, and th you know, that's always the case. So you can't let the banks fail. The banking system has to function, and the banking union is shoring that up. Okay, uh, Stephen, because but we... But the ba Go ahead, jump but in. But yeah, the banking system doesn't have to... Uh, be funded by taxpayers' money in the sense that we put money in it to shore up bankers and their lifestyles, and then when the bank gets a little bit on its feet, sell it off, as George Osborne is doing or trying to do in this country. Uh, there are other ways of dealing with the situation if banks fail, uh, uh, not just shoring them up by taxpayers' money. So. But the problem is, I do, I do understand this issue, that we've got ourselves into an absolute bind here. But I, but I want to just come back to the point that, frankly, I don't think there's any economic problem at the moment, daunting though they may be, that cannot be solved by the abandonment of the austerity program uh, and a, a general reflation of the European economies, which leads to growth in countries, because growth is one of the ways you deal with debt. At least the Keynesians, you know, have an argument about how to deal with debt. You grow your economy and you pay off the debt. The problem with the austerity people who are in the lead everywhere at the moment is they say you've got to shrink your economy to pay off debt. And that is ludicrous. That's ludicrous because right. it, an economy is for Peter, people. The, Go the ahead, Mitch. Go ahead. Go ahead. The only problem with the Keynesian economic theorist is Keynesian economics works with surpluses, not with deficits. And you can't just print money out of a hat. Uh, which is what they've been doing. I mean, there are three possible alternatives with the way that I see that this can end. It can end in a global, global financial crisis, starting with the currency wars, which we're already start, starting to see, a bond collapse precipitated by other collapses, the second possibility, civil unrest leading to anarchy, and the third is war, and I hope we don't get that far. But as far as what the resolution trust did in the 80s when it unwound the SNLs, that, that, was an orderly, that was an orderly unwind of these banks. So you wouldn't have a failure. That's what the media puts across to scare and fearmonger people like they're doing in Greece right now. Your banking system, you're going to go back to the dark ages. That's a, that's a, a typical propaganda technique to try to instill fear in people so they accept and they're compliant and obedient. It's a lovely thing that the media does to us. Well, hang on a second. Well, go ahead, Sarazad. I mean, I, I agree with you, Sarazad, and watching. I mean, you, you need to go to I the mean, ATM and get some cash to feed your family. I mean, that's not scaremongering, because the, the European, uh, Central European Bank said it will stop supporting the Greek banks on Tuesday if they don't pay up. Go ahead and watch it. I don't believe that. Okay, go. And you're right. And, 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 the, and the problem is... The problem is this, that, you know, when you've got governments that are not willing to negotiate uh, on, on, a, on, a, on a playing field uh, that, is, that are international standards, then you've got bank runs. Last week alone, $4 billion was pulled out of by, by, by depositors, and this week it's been another $2 billion. And this will continue uh, if the negotiations aren't settled. Okay, Mitch, I'm going to give you the last word. Go ahead. I mean, it's a very difficult situation for everybody, but I think that the money printing, the excess of debt, credit, and leverage have caused the problem. Now, did we learn lessons from 2006, 7, and 8? I would argue, no, we haven't. And I think what we need to do is go back, think about what's caused the problems, and figure out a way to resolve them. I don't think that holding the pensioners and the younger generations to, to account for the money that's been misspent by the banks is the way forward at all. And that's what most of the governments in Europe are doing. I think France is probably the most likely to leave the euro first if Greece doesn't this time. Spain will follow and Italy will be right on its heels. I think we're in a bad place. As in the, as I think in, that this is, well, the euro will fail. Okay, and, and on, on, that, de on that depressing note, on that depressing note, folks, we've run out of time. <laughs> Many thanks to my guests in Washington, New York, and in London. And thanks to our viewers for watching us here at RT. See you next time. And remember, Ross Top Rules.